in this uh, lecture we are going to make use of idle gas and uh, first law of uh, uh, thermodynamics to solve some uh, simple problems. So, uh, we will have two examples uh, to start with uh, we will take the first one. So, what we have is a two well insulated cylinders which are placed uh, as shown below. Okay. So, you have this two cylinder, the piston in both the cylinders are identical construction. The clearance between the piston and walls are also made identical in both cylinders. The pistons and the connecting rods are metallic. Okay. So, this is a piston here, these are connected and this metallic which means basically there is a transfer of heat from this region to another this region through the rod here. Cylinder A is filled with a gaseous liquid at 2 bar, cylinder B is filled with a gaseous helium at 1 bar. The temperature is 300 Kelvin and the length is 10 centimeters. So, this is the length which is given here is the 10 centimeter. Both pistons are only slightly lubricated. The stops are removed after all oscillations have ceased and the system is at rest and the pressure in both cylinders are for practical purposes identical. Okay. So, uh, once the stop is released, so this once you take it out, uh, basically it, it will oscillate okay, and eventually it reach an equilibrium point as we know from a postulates. And then at that condition, the pressures in both the system can be considered to be same. So, the question is now assuming the gases are identical, also gases are ideal with a constant uh, heat capacity. And for simplicity, assuming that the mass of cylinders and pistons are negligible, then what are the, the final temperatures in these two particular cylinders? So, this is a very simple question. How do you solve it? Uh, one way is of course, we take a system different and try to understand each subsystems or system A and B. The other possibility is that we simply apply the first law to the composite here. So, if we uh, consider the composite uh, A plus B composite system, okay, rather than applying this uh, to compartment, probably is uh, would make much easier thing. Now, this is insulated, remember that this is well insulated. So, essentially whatever the changes occurs in the internal energy which remains in here. So, there is no transfer of energy through any boundary. So, in that case uh, one can consider if you consider the composite uh, A plus B then it is going to be isolated okay. and then we can have delta U A plus delta U B is equal to 0. Now, it is an ideal gas and hence I can uh, make use of the expression of uh, U in terms of uh, heat capacity. So, this is going to be N A C V T A F minus T A I. Okay, so, let us say that uh, for the case of A, the initial temperature was T A i and uh, final temperature is T A f. So, I can write delta U A as N A C V N A f minus N A i. Okay. Now, the other thing is that uh, we are assuming the gases with a constant C V. So, both have the constant C V. Now, for the case of uh, compartment B, we can write the same expressions and but it is going to be B C V T B F minus T B I okay, and this must be 0. Okay. So, change in the total change in the internal energy in the compartment B plus that in A need to be 0 for an isolated composite system here uh, because it is insulated and we are ignoring all other losses. And then I am mean, making use of ideal gas expression to write it in terms of C V. So, now what I can do is I can try to rearrange this expression. So, this is going to be N A C V T F plus N B C V T B F. This must be equal to N A. C V T A I plus uh, N B C V T B I. Now, in fact, I do not have to write C V, so I can get rid of C V. And the other thing which uh, since uh, is a metallic hair rod, so because of the heat transfer within the system, the final temperature here need to be same. 
directly comes from the laws of thermodynamics here. So we can consider TEF is equal to TBF and in that case uh, you have uh, an A plus and B TAF this is an A TI plus and B TBI okay. this means TAF final temperature is nothing but weighted average of temperature with respect to moles. So, this is something which is the expression. Okay. So, this is the first part okay, that is what exactly what is the final temperatures. Now, you know the temperatures which was given the temperature is 300. So, you, and you also know an A this an A you can write use the ideal gas to find it out the ideal gas equation of state to find it out and you can obtain the expressions. Okay. So, I can move to the next question. Now, consider the situation described in the uh, consider the situation described in the earlier example, but with well insulated piston and connected rods of low thermal conductivity, uh, which essentially means that uh, well uh, that the heat will not get transferred from one region to another region. So, our assumption our consideration of temperature equality cannot be imposed on it. So, since the process is fast and essentially heat transfer is can be neglected through the rod. So, we can consider this to be now that final temperature is going to be different. So, what we is being asked is what are the final temperature after the oscillations have ceased and the pressures have equalized. Pressure still will different because of this uh, connecting rod is going to be is having a low thermal conductivity. Okay, so, now how do we solve this problem? Again, we go back to the fact that this is a well insulated. So, we should consider again a composite A plus B, but it is no longer a simple system. Okay. It has an internal adiabatic wall. Okay. So, it is no longer simple system. Okay. It has an internal adiabatic wall, but still the composite A plus B you, if you apply the first law you will get or uh, this your first law can be applied to the composite system and essentially the expression is going to be delta A U A plus delta U B. Okay. And thus I can still write an A C V T A F minus T A I and B C V T B F minus T B I. Okay. So, I can rearrange this as N A F T A F plus N B T B F is N A. So, I am going to take this A I is initial temperatures to the other side. So, this expression I am going to make use of it later. So, this expression will be useful in the later stage. Now, what we are assuming is there is no friction in the composite A, process is slow and quasi static. If that is the case, then uh, here the process is slow, then essentially you have an insulated system and this is also adiabatic essentially. So, in this case, uh, you can simply consider such a case as du is equal to nothing but dw or delta w because there is no heat transfer. So, in that case, I can write du. I can write du uh, a as simply which is nothing but p a d v a. So, this is something which we can write. So, what I have to do is I have to get rid of this uh, the volume part here we have to eliminate the volume. So, how do you do that here? So, this is only for the compartment uh, a. Okay. So, we can make use of the idle gas here. So, let us see idle gas if we consider V is nothing but N R T by P. So, if you take D V this is going to be N R T D T by P minus N R T P square D P. Okay. So, you have this expression. Now, 
this is for A, so we can plug in here. So I have now an A C V D T. This is from this and this equal to minus P A and R D T by P A minus N R T by P A square D P A. Okay. Now I am going to readjust this, the right hand side. So I am going to get N C V D T is, uh, if you readjust this here, you can get a denominator P A square, the P A comes here, okay, and that will become easier. So it is going to be P A is a negative sign here, and R P A d t a minus n r t a d p a p a square and this will cancel out ok. So, I have an expression now n a n a that you have now minus n a r p will cancel here. So, it is going to be simply d t a minus n a r t a divided by p a d p a ok. So, this is an expression here now ok. n a is common and this is also n a. So, this must be also n a right. So, if n a you can cancel out the t this is also t a. So, this is now we can readjust this as c v plus r. So, this n a I am going to cancel here c v by r d t a and this is going to be d p a r t a by p a. Now, this can be readjusted you can bring the t a here. So, it is going to be c v plus r d t a by t a in fact you can bring the r also and this is going to be c p a uh, d p a by p a ok. So, if you integrate this you are going to get t a f by t a i this is nothing but t a f by p a i r by c v plus r. So, this is the expression you are going to get by solving. So, this was only the first uh, compartment, uh, compartment A. Okay. So, uh, we still have to get uh, the P f ratio, this we do not know at this point. So, we can now make use of the fact that uh, even though the process is occurring, the total volume of both the compartment remains, the, remains constant. So, we are going to make use of that. So, volume is constant which means V a f plus v b f is nothing but v a i plus v b i. Now, this is nothing but v total. So, I can write this uh, expression as uh, because of pressures final pressure is going to be same. So, I can write this as uh, n a t a f plus n b t b f r by p f. So, that is going to be your v t ok. So, this is something which is because uh, we are using the idle gas. So, n a t a r by p f is going to be v f. Similarly, that is for the volume of b f. p f is constant because of the fact that the pressure will eventually when the piston oscillation stops that will lead to the equality of the pressure ok. Now, that means we are writing P f as N a T a f plus N b T b f r by V a i plus V b i which we know earlier the total volume so, that comes directly from this expression. Okay, so, P f you bring it here, 
vt is you bring it to the denominator vt is nothing but the sum of the initial volume now this can also be connected to the initial temperatures since this if you go back to earlier statement here this is nothing but natai plus nb tbi so from this earlier statement we can write pf as na tai plus nb tai plus vai plus vbi but this is nothing but pai vai plus pbi vbi by vai plus vbi so what we have done is we have simply converted everything in the form of the initial conditions here now we will plug in the values the pressures and the volumes you are going to get 1.5 bar okay in that case once you have the pf you can go back to the expression here okay so from double star you have tf is 1.5 was is the final pressure initially is 2 bar in the compartment a and then you have to plug in r and cv values r and cv plus r now with cv you can cv um, let's say if you consider cv is 12.6 joule per mole kelvin then this value comes out to be 267 kelvin similarly from the first law you can plug in back the expressions so from here you can get tbf so tbf comes out to be 366 kelvin okay so this is from the first law so that was uh, the end of the exercises where we have used the first law and as well as the Iduga expression to solve a simple set of examples uh, uh, and that would be the end of uh, today's class. Uh, look forward to have you in my next class. Thank you.